Hey, Tim Alden here. We got some new styles of our leather earring blanks, a teardrop diamond, and we got three patterns that you can download for free, whether you buy the blanks for us, it's got the outline if you wanna hand cut them, or you can leave the cutting to us. We got a die and we can just click them out pretty good and you don't have to buy a whole hide of leather just to do a couple pairs of earrings. So anyway, let's get started carving these things. Okay, so we're gonna go ahead and carve out our next pattern here, we're gonna do this flower. It's just a simple four petal flower. We'll lay that on there. It's a pretty easy one to draw if you can't download the pattern. Just gonna break this piece up. And, uh, four petals. Go ahead, cut it with our swivel knife. You want to stay out of the way of where your flower center is going to be. Okay, so I'm going to come in and mark my flower center here just lightly. And then we're going to shade flower center. I'm going to use the Barry King vertical lined thumbprint. And we're going to go right up to those seeds and just over them actually. And I'll go kind of leave a little bit of a gap where that flower petal starts. around to this side. You want to tip your tool back to where it gets real deep where the flower center is and then fades out. You want deeper in the middle versus the outsides. Don't mind the hammering that doesn't go with this video. Chad's over there working on another project. We can't exactly stop the shop for these YouTube videos. So there will be some background noise. Okay, so we got that shaded out there. Come in with my number two Barry King checkered beveler, just your regular angle. And I'm just gonna bevel clear to the edge. And uh, once again, like the first earring video, these are Herman Oak earring blanks. A lot of people think for a pair of earrings it might not be worth the quality leather, but it's the only thing I have in my shop, so we're going to use the best stuff we can get. So once we got those beveled out, come back with our flower center. We're going to knock that down. Just like that, and your shading comes out from underneath it. Then we're gonna come in with our lined veiner. Give some depth to these corners here, right by our flower centers. And the curve of your veiner always goes with the curve of the dominant petal. The dominant one being the one on top. So that just kind of puts a little extra depth right there. Now we're going to come back with our swivel knife work. These projects are really fun because they're really basic. And so one, if you're just starting out and learning, you don't have to use a lot of material to practice your carving. And if you get to where you're 
you know, make a mistake on one, the investment's pretty darn small comparatively, but all of these techniques that you're gonna practice in these little projects transfer to the bigger projects. All your beveling, swivel knife work, shading, all applies to the big projects. So on these decorative cuts that I'm doing, I usually try to cut my first one right up the middle and I start out deep at the flower center and then gradually lighten up. And my hand is pretty much down on the marble so I can get it as steady as can be. And I have my blade pretty flat. I don't tip it back too far because that opens up these cuts. And so we're just gonna come out here. We're slightly fading them, the angle to the outside, and we're tapering them off here. So they get shorter as you go to the outside. It's kind of a engraving shading technique you'll see in a lot of flowers and engraving. And then these cross hatch lines, we're gonna go all the way across, and then we're gonna get shorter with our cuts and we're going to center them on the center of these cuts. So they kind of get, go from being all the way across and then taper off like so. And then I'm just going to put my blade here I'm gonna high center it on this corner. Just cut and turn out. Cut and turn out. Just give these petals a little bit of character. It's not so boring. And there you have it. Our second design. We're gonna go ahead and hit those with Phoebe's tan coat. It's a little softer finish to it. It doesn't have as much contrast when we go to antique, but it does a pretty good job. And so I just shear down a little piece of scrap sheep's wool and then I put the tan coat on there. You just go ahead and coat that. And it'll well up in the cracks, but it'll dry good. So you can go ahead and coat that. Now with these that we did the tan coat on, it's gonna be softer finish. And so it's gonna have a little bit different look to it than the saddle lac. So usually I'll let these guys dry overnight before I put the top coat on. Just makes that antique really uh, dry good so it doesn't peel out of there. And uh, it'll be a little foggy when we come back to it, but we'll put a top coat on it and it'll brighten right back up and look real nice. So we've let these dry real good. So we're gonna go ahead and put our final top coat on. We're gonna use tan coat on the one that we used tan coat on originally. And we're gonna use Saddleac on the other two. 
for everybody that doesn't live in California where it's legal. actually put tan coat on the back and the sides. I don't get too crazy about finish the edges. These come out of the die pretty clean cut and uh, you don't have to worry about edging them as much as a hand cut piece. Kind of have a rounded top to them. So, it's not a designer handbag, it's an earring. So we're going to let those guys dry. Well, thanks for stopping by. Hope you like this video and instructions on how to do these. We're going to go ahead and put the... Uh, earring hangers on them, take pictures. You can check out our website where we sell the blanks to see the finished product photo and we'll see you next time.